Hey everyone and welcome back to As Art. So here on this channel, if you've stuck around for a while, you know that our goal is to discuss all the artistry around us. Nick and I also have a huge love for the hardworking people who actually create the tools that make things like games and movies possible. Reillusion, who over the years have crafted some really nice tools that help expedite that overall process with a minimum of technical hurdles to have to work through. Now Character Creator is, as you can probably guess, for creating characters. They can be bipedal humans, which the software has focused most on in the past, but now you can get into quadrupeds and any other creative characters, and you can make those models animatable and bring life to them. iClone picks up where that one leaves off and is all about setting up, animating, lighting, and rendering your actual scene, characters and all, or then getting those characters and settings and props into any other software you might need. Here we're going to use Character Creator 4 to try and create an in-the-ballpark-inspired, not an exact copy, mock-up of Peter Cushing's iconic features. You'll probably recall him as Grand Moff Tarkin in Star Wars A New Hope. After we get him all set up, we'll transfer that character into iClone 8 for animation. We'll easily inject him into Unreal Engine 4 or 5, which is one of the biggest game and virtual production engines around. So I haven't been a long-time user, I've slowly built up my library of content for these applications. So I'll be using some purchasable marketplace content in Character Creator 4 to help get us to our final state more quickly. I'll try and mention them when I do so, and also I'll make sure to put all those links in the video description. So if you're wondering where to get that, you'll know where to go. All right, so to get started with this, we're going to open up Character Creator 4, and you can see we have our base neutral human character. And just because it's kind of weird looking at a naked digital human, we're going to slap some boxes on there. From there, let's go ahead and try and search for a good starting point. We're going to make the biggest changes first to get us there visually and work our way into making finer details as we go along. Just because we know we're going for a more gaunt look of Peter Cushing, I'm going to go ahead and start off with the male thin actor. And again, if we go ahead and compare that to Peter Cushing himself, we can see that that's actually getting us, aside from the more sickly look of our male thin, is actually getting us in that realm. So when we apply that, we can see we're getting a whole lot of Bones protruding out and really too skinny for what we want. But remember, we're going to be putting some clothes, in this case, long sleeve and a trench coat on our Peter Christian character. So we don't need to worry about that too much, but just so we can kind of see how the overall process works, let's talk about some of the tools. So one way you can adjust the shape and look of your character is using the morphs. A morph is being able to shift or adjust between one look and another. So for instance, a 3D character is smiling, they probably have a smile morph target or a upper lip up left and an upper lip up right. As far as our character itself, we can go and use those morphs to adjust how the character actually looks. And you can see here at the get-go, we actually have some adjustments already applied and we're going to go ahead and refine this to get at least starting off, get our face looking a little bit more like the character we're shooting for. A tool to fine tune in a manual fashion, if we don't want to use just more sliders, is we have the Sculpt Morph tool. And you can see that it splits up the face into sections. And all you have to do is just click and drag to adjust the particular feature you're hovering over. You can left click and drag left and right. This will typically make something thicker if it's in the face or thinner. And we can also do that for things like the chin and the nose and everything else. Now again, we're not going for a perfect recreation of Peter Cushing, just that is inspiration of a really gaunt, kind of really super lean face. And we're going to kind of go from there. But you can see already, we're actually getting a little bit more in there. And we'll just go back and forth a bit to help refine that. And we're going to use a added plugin called SkinGen in order to do that. And what this does is it lets you add up a bunch of layers to create a very particular look that you want for your digital character. You can do things like face paint or scars or tattoos or whatever they might be. But you can see for this male thin character that we started off with, it already had a bunch of presets for the skin gen applied. And all you have to do is select the skin base and you can start to make adjustments to any of these. And then I'm also going to drag on down and go to the color balance because I don't want them to have quite as sickly of a color. And so I'm gonna go ahead and adjust that to where it looks a little bit closer to Peter Cushing. And of course, based on what lighting and shot we're looking at, that's going to change the bags on the eyes which Peter Cushing does have some of, we can go ahead and adjust that with the eye decal. And that's going to get us closer in the ballpark of what we're wanting. Mainly what I'm wanting to work on here is adjusting the normal strength. So normals in 3D add the amount of detail without actually adding more geometry or complexity to the model itself. It's a really cheap way to get huge improvements in visual results. And one thing that we definitely want to do if we are going more for that Peter Cushing look is his eye color. He does have these kind of piercing blue eyes. So I'll go ahead and add the eyes to get them in the realm. And if I wanted to make them a little bit more saturated, I can go down to that particular material, right click on it and say adjust and go ahead and up the saturation of that particular texture. 
We're not going for a perfect match when it comes to hair, but we are going to try and get him in the general realm. And I'm going to use the beard and brow builder that you saw flash on the screen earlier to get us in the realm of that. And there's two main ones that kind of get us in that realm. I'm just going to choose which one I think is a good starting point and then do the same thing with the old style hair. And you can see I literally just did a search for old and uh, taking a look at what options we have. But of course, you can always go through and fine tune everything to your particularly needed results. If we open his mouth, boy, his teeth are a little bit older than we're wanting. So I'm going to go ahead and search for teeth and give him something a little bit in between those two. And with his gums being a little bit too saturated, I'm going to grab that particular area and down the saturation to make it look a little bit more fitting for what we're going for and his body and skin. All right, so a Peter Cushing look like definitely deserves better than a pair of boxers. So let's go ahead and try and get this guy outfitted a little bit more than that. So I'm going to go to the content tab. And I didn't talk about this too much, but all of the categories for your characters are really laid out in nice categories. So you can see actually making the actor itself are broken down in these categories. And you have your different subcategories here. So you have your morphs we talked about, head morphs, and so on and so forth. So everything's broken down in nice categories, we can break it down. So I know if I wanted, was looking for eyes, I just click on eyes, and it'll take me to that category. Now, in this case, I want to go ahead and go to clothes. And so I'll go ahead and click on clothing, and that's going to bring me down to these guys. I could, of course, scroll down as well. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just give him some general stuff that I believe I'm 99% sure is just standard content that comes with iClone. I'm just going to put a basic t-shirt on this guy. And we'll also go ahead and give him some pants, because, you know, who wants to walk around in a t-shirt and boxers? If you guys do, you don't need to let me know that. And uh, I'll go ahead and double click on these jeans here. And last but not least, let's go ahead and give him a coat, which I think gives him a little bit more personality. He's not Grand Moff Tarkin necessarily, but at least he has some style. So we'll go ahead and give him this, slim, this uh, trench coat. And there we go. And so you can see if I go ahead and go through that we're seeing him going through the motions of the animation. And we can turn on some extra cool things as well if they aren't already enabled. But in this case, I did. We have our rigid body simulation. And we have our soft claw simulation. I can see that we do have our activated physics and object gravity. So it is going to actually move around more realistically than it would otherwise. You can see at the bottom of this getting that movement from the physics engine. So we could most certainly spend a lot more time refining and making this character look wonderful. And if I was really doing this, I probably would. At this point, you've got a general idea on the overall tools we're using here. But in order to confidently be able to move on to the animation process, I want to get some troubleshooting and diagnostics to let me know if there's any issues with this. And you can't quite see if the drop down, it's off screen a little bit, but I'm applying a diagnostic mode where it's going to go through a facial performance where it's going to be giving emphasis to the eyes, the mouth, the teeth, everything else. And if anything's really popping out and not looking right, this is probably a good way to notice. And you can see, while not perfect, this is actually getting us in the ballpark of what we're wanting. And at least as a first pass, I feel confident enough with this, aside from changing minor things like the eyelash color, that we can go ahead and move on into eye clone and actually apply some real animation to this character. And really, this is going to conclude the work we're going to do here. And from here on out, we're going to be doing the rest of the work inside of eye clone, actually adding the animation to our model, and then from there, transferring it into Unreal. So this is literally a one-click affair. I'm going to click on the little button in the upper left that has an IC that stands for iClone, a little arrow, meaning that's going to transfer the character into iClone. Since I didn't have iClone open previously, just clicking that button is going to launch iClone for me. And then once it's open, it's going to go through the process of loading stream and converting data and importing the character into there. Any animation I had applied in Character Creator will carry over as well. So in this case, it's the diagnostic animation for the body. And that's really all there is to it in order to transfer from one to the other. Now I'm going to keep it simple, at least to start off. And I'm going to go ahead and delete the animation for the character and transfer just the character in what's called a T-pose into Unreal. And that's typically how a character is transferred over when it's being prepared for animation. You can see I opened up the Unreal Live Link plugin and all I want to transfer over is the character. So that's all that's going to be checked. I'll go ahead and click on that transfer file. And off screen, you can't see it, but Unreal Engine is already open. And this is where the kind of witchcraft of character creator that I really love comes through, where it's going to do all of the transfer and set up the materials and textures and everything like that for us. And while the lighting in this scene is not flattering at all, you can see that our character did come through nice and cleanly, and we have him ready to go inside of Unreal Engine for either game or cinematic production. So initially, I had intended to cover a lot more in this video. Face motion capture, body motion capture, using the really cool AccuLip system inside of iClone where you can take text and turn it into lip-synced speech. 
but pushing 10 minutes is already kind of long for what I consider to be a general overview video. But in the future, you'll probably see other videos on as art. And then if you want more technical step-by-step -step breakdowns on how to do these things, you can always head over to our sister channel, Johnny How To, which is more software, hardware, tutorial-based type of media. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. I hope you found this insightful, and we'll see you on the next As Art.